the uh, Chinese recently made a decision um, to uh, take the visas from all of the New York Times, Washington Ju uh, Post, and Wall Street Journal journalists from mainland China, Hong Kong, and Macau. Um, were you surprised by that decision, and do you think it can be overturned? Honestly, I was not surprised. Of course, I have to say, the fact is not all of them have their visa terminated. These papers still have some people working in China. Not all of them have their visa terminated. But I'm not really surprised by this decision because it was all initiated in the United States. Look at how the US government is treating our journalists here in the United States. They have driven out about 60, 60 Chinese journalists from this country on the basis that they represent or they believe in certain ideology or political system. But as far as I know, you, you don't make any distinction, distinction among the journalists based on their political beliefs. They could have whatever political belief, but they're still journalists by profession. Do you see any space for an opening between the Americans and China? Again, if I, if I look at this, I see the biggest crisis that we've experienced in our lifetimes, and I see several concrete steps by both countries that are not moving to cooperation, they're actually moving towards more confrontation, and, and this, these decisions around the media are only one. Do you see any concrete steps that I'm perhaps not seeing that imply that the countries are coming together more? I certainly don't want to see any escalation of tensions between our two countries any time, but especially at this critical moment. I certainly want to see any further deterioration of relations, and I'm doing my best to prevent this from happening. But what is surprising to me is that is how, how low people could go here sometime for some of the politicians how low they could go. It was really surprising to me. Are you, are you talking about um, the senator um, that uh, suggested that this was created in a, in a bio lab in Wuhan? Well, I don't want to name any names. No, because I'm just saying that because the Chinese government, of course, um, made very similar accusations and officially so. So, I mean, I just wonder if that's the kind of thing that you say is only coming from the US or is actually coming from both sides. I think the fact is we do not initiate all these escalations. We do not make the provocations. But if other people choose to do that, we have to respond. And what do we do to get out of this cycle? Let's concentrate on the positive things. Let's focus on our common interests and mutual need. Let's work together to respond to this global crisis to save people's lives, to save the future of a global economy, and to save the future of the global community. This is our paramount task. Now, President Trump, when he spoke with your president, before that, he was calling uh, the virus the China virus. And after he spoke with him, he stopped doing that. Um, was there anything direct in the conversation between the two leaders that gives you reason to believe that our countries are going to move closer together again? Well, based on my own experience here, our two leaders have a very good and effective working relationship between them. Their meetings, their phone calls have been, all of them, constructive and giving us some guidance about the relations. So hopefully, everybody would work together with us to implement these such agreement between the two presidents and really focus on the constructive things that we really have to do together.